I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and for this lesson, for the portrait sculpting course, we're going to be going over the hair. Now, my first recommendation when it comes to sculpting hair is forget that you're sculpting hair. Forget everything you thought you knew about sculpting hair. Done. Don't think of it as hair. Beginners often think of hair as tiny strands of millions of tiny follicles that are sticking out of the head as, as hair. They should know better. Now, this might technically be accurate, but when we try to sculpt like this, it makes the hair look fake, looks stiff, tends not to look very realistic or supple or soft. When we devote too much time to making a hair texture that we think looks accurate with every strand of hair indicated. Instead of thinking of hair as hair, think of it as chunks, as chunks of hair. Chunky, clumpy, lumpy, hairy bumps. My lumps, my lovely hairy lumps. Check it out. The point is, we're trying to think of hair as volume and mass and forget about the texture, especially during the beginning stages. And we're just trying to capture that shape of the mass of the hair, the volume of the hair. Think of hair as thick frosting spread onto a cake. All of the sculpting principles that we talked about in the figure sculpting course still apply to hair. So when sculpting the hair, we approach it just as we would if we were sculpting any other complex object. We start with the primary forms, we build them in small, and then add on the secondary forms on top, and then finally worry about the surface detail or texture. Also the principle of focusing on the outline rather than getting caught up in the internal information inside of that silhouette. Something you can do if you're struggling paying attention to those primary and secondary forms is just let your eyes go out of focus so that it becomes a little bit blurry or you can blur the reference images that you're observing and that allows you to focus on the shadow shapes and really understand a little bit better those primary and secondary forms. This will help you see how the light plays on the hair and then also the general direction of those clumps of hair, how they're moving through space. And it'll get rid of that distracting texture. For this hairy assignment, I'll be using a cast of the simplified head that I went over when we talked about the secondary forms of the head, and that way I'll have something simple to build the hair on top of. You can use your simplified head study if you did that assignment, or you can just use a more simplified head block-in, like the block-ins that we went over in the lesson on three different methods for blocking in the head. Remember that the larger the sculpture is, the more time it will take to develop the mass and develop the sculpture. So if you're wanting to do several different hairstyles, consider doing several smaller practice studies. The next thing you'll want is references of the specific hairstyle that you'd like to sculpt. Remember when we're using references to get as many as possible, if you're using yourself or a friend as a reference, get a turnaround of different angles so that you can see how the forms of the hair exist in space from many different angles. You can use your own hairstyle or choose another hairstyle that you think would be fun to sculpt. If you'd like some free references to use, you can go over to the figure sculpting course and there were some poses provided by posespace.com that are censored poses, but you can use those as well to have a reference for sculpting the hair and the portrait and the full figure. So you can find those free references over at proca.com. Now that you've got something to sculpt the hair onto and you've got your references, let's go over some other tips for sculpting the hair. If you're sculpting a specific person and you're trying to capture an accurate likeness, then pay special attention to the hairline. You can draw this in with a knife or another tool to accurately capture the shape of that hairline. We can start by giving an indication of where the hairline begins along the center line of the face above the forehead. We can then observe the model from the side view and make sure that the shape of that hairline looks accurate when compared to the eye socket, the brow ridge, the nose, the superior temporal line, the cheek, and the other surrounding features. The transition from the hair to the head is a lot softer than we realize. We don't want the hair to look like a wig that we've just slapped on our sculpture. And if the transition between the skin of the head and the hair is too abrupt, that's exactly what it'll look like. So if we treat the hair totally differently and with a completely different texture than the rest of the sculpture, that's what it'll feel like. It'll feel like a wig or something that doesn't fit on top of the sculpture. For example, I often see beginners go in and with a knife or another tool, make a bunch of little texture marks, lines in the clay to simulate the hair texture. 
it usually looks too hard and almost gives it a metallic feeling, like little sheets of metal. It doesn't usually look very convincing, though it does add a lot of contrast to the hair. And so if that's what you're going for, and if you like that look, then you're the artist, you're free to do that. But I find that usually a softer approach works a little bit better. I usually don't find it as convincing as somebody that's gone through and built in the forms of the hair in a softer way. To me, softer is usually more lifelike. So when sculpting the hair, it's better to err on the side of soft, smooth, and subtle. That isn't to say that you give no thought for the direction of the hair, but rather that we think of the direction as masses or clumps of hair moving through space. So this goes back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, that we're thinking of it as masses, as chunks, and the direction of the hair as flowing forms rather than as individual strands of hair. As you're sculpting, think about large planes and plane transitions. An art teacher once told me that when you're drawing hair, think about drawing smoke, something that's flowing and soft. And when you're sculpting, you can think of it as the same way, soft and flowing. Smoke. Something else to think about when you're sculpting hair is making sure that the locks of hair overlap in the correct way. The locks of hair are layered in a certain way. So just like roofers, when they're building a roof, you want to layer those starting at the bottom and then work your way up top. You wanna to do something similar when you're working from the outside of the hair up towards the crown of the head. You wanna start at the outside and then work your way up. The hair typically follows a pattern that starts at the crown of the head and then spirals out from there. This place at the back of the head where the hair spirals outward is called the swirl or the whirl of the hair where the hair spirals out. So as you're sculpting, lay in pieces of clay that go along the direction of the hair. Start with bigger pieces and bigger forms and then work your way to the smaller forms. In the premium lesson, we'll go more in depth on the anatomy and terminology of the hair, as well as look at different techniques for sculpting different hairstyles. There are also additional demos, critique videos, and much more. So hopefully I'll see you soon over at proca.com slash portrait sculpt. Okay, your assignment is to now go out and sculpt your own hair study. Remember that you can post your assignment over at proca.com underneath this free video by creating a free account. And that way you can be featured in upcoming critique videos. So grab some clay and get to it. Stay productive, stay creative. I'll see you in the next lesson.